Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Sa video na to, pag-uusapan natin ang chapter 3 at kung paano isulat yung research design. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. Ang chapter 3 ay may title na research methodology. Dito ina-explain yung overall plan ng research at kung paano mag the data gathering yung mga researchers. Ito yung kanyang mga parts. Itong mga parts na to Pare-pareho siya ng content pero iba-iba ng title depende sa ipapagamit sa inyo ng research advisor ninyo. We have five parts at sa video na to, ang pag-uusapan natin ay yung research design. When we say research design, pwede ang tatlo. It's either descriptive, experimental, or historical. Ang gagawin dito sa part na to ng research design, i-explain mo kung ano yung research design na gagamitin sa research mo, i-define mo siya, tapos i-explain mo kung paano naging ganun yung tatakbuhin ng research mo. Kaya dapat dito, ma-recall mo yung iba't ibang types ng research. First is the descriptive research. Ito yung nagde-describe ng present status ng variable na in-investigate mo. Pwedeng descriptive normative survey ang i-follow ng research mo. Dito, pag-uusapan yung trend. When we say trend, yung, yung status na, yung present status na ng variable as compared to the previous status of that variable. Pag-correlational research study, ini-investigate naman dito kung paano nagiging related yung dalawa or more na variables sa isa't isa. Pag-descriptive evaluative study, from the word itself, hindi lang nagpapakita ng description, ine-evaluate niya din. Kadalasan, ang involved dito ay longitudinal at cross-sectional study. Itong mga descriptive evaluative studies, it takes time, even maybe decades to complete, kasi pinapakita niya yung long-term na change sa variable over a period of time. Depende kung isang age group lang, that is longitudinal study, o kaya two or more age groups ang involved. That is cross-sectional studies. Kapag naman assessment or evaluation study, ang aim nito ay madetermine kung effective pa ba or hindi na yung isang policy or practice. Siyempre, kung hindi na, kailangan ng makabuo ng panibagong policy or panibagong practice. The present Educational system in the Philippines is K-12 at ito ay produkto ng isang assessment or evaluation study na naka-anchor doon sa previous curriculum na basic education curriculum. Nakita ng mga researchers na hindi na enough yung RBEC or yung BEC curriculum kaya pinaltan nila ng K-12. Descriptive comparative study, dito naman, pinapakita yung significant differences between two or more groups of subjects based on a certain criteria. Based on a certain description, pinapakita kung may pagkakaiba ba, may significant difference ba when the respondents are grouped based on their demographic profile. It is important to note that if your study is undergoing a descriptive research, pwedeng combination ng dalawang design na descriptive ang i-follow mo. For example, pwede kang mag-correlational at the same time assessment or evaluation. O kaya naman, comparative study at normative survey. Pwedeng pareho yon. Basta, madedefine mo or sa tingin mo, iyon yung mga research design na akma para sa research mo. Aside from descriptive, we also have experimental research. From the word itself, gumagamit siya ng mga controlled environment or experiments para ma-observe yung mga variables. Pre-test, post-test, control group design. Ito nga palang mga ipepresent ko ay mga koonti lang na example ng experimental research. Una ay yung pre-test, post-test, control group design. Ibig sabihin nito, meron kang dalawang group, control group and experimental group. Pareho silang magpi-pre-test, tapos yung treatment factor sa experimental group lang ipapakita. Sa control group, wala. And then sa dulo, magpo-post-test. For example, your study is about cooperative learning strategy. So cooperative learning strategy yung magiging factor mo Yung isang section, igugroup-group mo sila, gagawan mo sila ng groupings, pero itong control group, walang groupings na mangyayari. And then you will see if there is a difference pagdating sa kanilang post-test. 
Pero kung limited number ang meron ka na respondents, hindi feasible yung pre-test, post-test, control group design, kaya ito ang gagamitin mo or pwede mong gamitin. Single group, pre-test, post-test design. Kung isa lang ang group mo, magpre-pre-test siya tapos wala mo nang ibibigay na treatment factor, tapos post-test. After ng post-test, tsaka mo siya ulit bibigyan ng pre-test, tapos treatment factor, tapos post-test. So, kumbaga parang pinag-isa lang talaga yung previous method. Kasi dito, isang group lang ang involved. Meron din tayong tinatawag na Solomon for Group Design. From the word itself, apat na groups ang involved. Itong parehong group 1, control at experimental, pareho siyang mabibigyan ng pre-test. Yung parehong group 2, wala. And then, pagdating sa experimental group 1 at experimental group 2, parehong mabibigyan ng treatment factor, pero lahat sila magkakaroon ng post-test. Ang disadvantage nito, napakaraming respondents ang involved at marami ka rin pag-aaralan or itatali na scores. Pero kita nyo naman, kung magiging maayos ang pagkikerry out ng Solomon for Group Design, magiging maayos din yung result ng iyong experiment. Meron din tayong tinatawag na historical research. Ito naman yung nagko-collect, nag-verify, or nagsisynthesize ng mga past events using evidences para ma-establish nila kung ano ba talaga yung nangyari sa history or kung anong nangyari sa past events. Dahil nga past events ang involved, hindi feasible na magkaroon ng survey. Instead, puro secondary sources ang involved. May mga primary documentary evidences which are diaries or logbooks, uh, official documents, yun ang magiging primary documentary evidence. Pwede rin non-textual sources, maps or photographs. Ang kailangan naman dito, ang issue dito sa historical research, syempre, kailangan yung magiging sources mo ay valid at authentic para maging solid yung foundation na susupport or magre-reject sa hypothesis mo. Dito sa historical research, dahil nga wala siyang survey na magaganap, magkakaroon lang ng data collection. Ibig sabihin, magre-research lang sa iba't ibang sources. Tapos pagka-research, i-analyze kung authentic ba, kung valid. Afterwards, i-report -re yung findings. Yan lang yung magiging flow ng historical research. So I'll be showing you a sample research design. Ito yung research ko din nung ako ay nag-aaral. Ipapakita ko sa inyo yung chapter 3 research design ko. So nakikita nyo ngayon yung chapter 3 research methodology at research design. Ang ginamit ko dito sa aking research ay quantitative approach tapos descriptive survey research methodology. Ang ibig sabihin ng descriptive survey, yan dinefine ko, gumamit ako ng isang book na makakapag-explain kung ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng descriptive survey research methodology. Parang katulad lang yan ng mga descriptive uh, research design na pinresent ko kanina. Ganyan lang yun. Ipapakita nyo lang, i-discuss nyo lang kung paano naging descriptive yung research. I-justify nyo. Kahit isang paragraph lang, that will be enough. So, ganyan tayo gumawa ng research design. Thank you for watching. If you learned from this video, please give it a huge thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon. See you on our next video.